Everybody say God bless. God bless. Brother Mark and Sister Sherry Wilhoyt. Amen. Come on, y'all. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Good to see all of you in the house of God. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Jesus said, if I be lifted up. Hallelujah. He didn't say when the preacher is lifted up. He didn't say when the songwriter is lifted up. He didn't say when the musicians are lifted up. But he said, if I be lifted up above the earth, then he said, I'll draw all men unto me. As Brother David gets ready to come and help me and accompany me in a moment, amen, I'd like for him to come. Amen, but there's something powerful and significant about when apostolic people get together and begin to worship the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says that demons tremble at the mere mention of the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That means the old devil, wherever he's at, he's, om he's not omnipresent as some may say that he is or think that he is. Hallelujah. But when he hears a good saint of God in the wee hours of the morning calling upon the name of Jesus, suddenly, hallelujah, demons begin to tremble. Hallelujah. The earth beneath the the enemy begins to shake because there's power and there's authority that's demonstrated in the awesome power of the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not putting it down anybody else. Hallelujah. But I'm just telling you that there's something. When you get the name of Jesus Christ applied to your life and you are buried with him, not with him, but you're buried with him in water baptism, there is something that comes over us, that changes us, that makes crooked paths straight. Hallelujah. That lets us know that we know without a doubt. Hallelujah, that we're ready to meet the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to that time. Spending eternity with all of you good folks. There's some folks that I'm not impressed with. There's some people around me that I've been around before that I just don't feel comfortable around. Hallelujah. But when you get around people who love Jesus and love the name of Jesus and love fellowship, then there's something supernatural that happens. Well, glory, I didn't have all this plan to say. I didn't know I was going to preach before us. Give me a good sound on that guitar. Woo! Hallelujah! You know, I'm kind of an impromptu, I guess you could say, type person. Give me a good sound on that guitar, Brother David. The world's greatest, in my opinion, guitar player. Well, glory. Hallelujah. I love it when he does amazing grace on the guitar. Hallelujah. There's something that happens when David begins to play those songs. Glory. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to sing. Amen. My harmonizer came on and I didn't even turn it on. Woo! Hallelujah. But there, we were up here practicing before the service, and I didn't really have in mind to do this song, and I got, I got to playing on the keyboard, and David got to jamming behind me, and I said, man, I said, I got to do this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, give me a little bit more sound on the keyboard here, a little bit more volume. Well, people get ready. There's a train coming, picking up passengers from coast to coast. Faith is the key. Go ahead and unlock it. There ain't no hiding place when the kingdom. train coming You don't need no ticket You just get on board Get on board All you need is some faith 
humming. There ain't no hiding place when the kingdom comes. Hallelujah. People get ready. There's a train coming. Picking up passengers from coast to coast. People get ready. All you need is some faith. To hear the peace of the humming. before this event, if I can get this microphone fixed, <laughs> amen, and so we were just kind of ad-libbing a little bit, having an impromptu moment, and so he don't really know what I'm going to do, but he's kind of got an idea.
I don't know this song, but I know who we singing about tonight. I'm 
say without a doubt already that Jesus is in the house. Hey Amen. I want the most beautiful lady in the entire world, in my opinion, praise God, to come and join me, my precious wife. We've been married for almost 39 years. She's still a good cook. She's still a good housekeeper. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. I'd like for her to say something good about the Lord before, while I'm getting my guitar, and we're going to do a song. Y'all can be seated. I love the Lord, and it's a privilege to be here tonight to worship the Lord with y'all. Back in 2017, when Harvey hit uh, Baytown, Texas, we didn't know what we were in store for. I told my husband, I said, I want to remodel. And so we started remodeling our kitchen, and we just got our kitchen remodeled. Got a new refrigerator, new stove, new microwave, new floor. I mean, oh, it was looking good. <laughs> I mean, I was so proud of it, and I loved to go in there and cook. And about three months later, the water started coming up. And I mean, when I say coming up, it was coming up. I, I got up that morning and I looked outside and our van was filling up with water and it was coming up our steps. And my husband was asleep and I went in there and I said, baby, you better get up. and You better get up fast. We got to get out of here. <laughs> and we left and when we... When we rode around the corner and looked at our house, our house had five feet of water in it. And I called the insurance company. I knew I had flood insurance, but our flood insurance had expired. And so, and, and it didn't expire, it wasn't that long. It, it was like five days and I called and I said, is there any way, you know, you can do something? I was crying. I, I was like, oh Lord, I said, We'll never be able to put this back together. And we'll never be able to live here again. And I, I thought, Lord, and they said, no, there, there's nothing we can do. We can't do anything. But you know what? With God, all things are possible. <laughs> and I was telling my husband, I, I felt like, you know, it was so bad at the time. But after it was all over with, after we threw everything away, everything we had, everything we owned had to go in the trash can out by the end of the road and all of our neighbors were in the same shape we were but after it was all said and done our house is new everything is new it looks like a model home it it turned out to be a blessing and I just want to thank the Lord for that Jesus your loving kindness I'm so blessed by all that you've done, this life that you give to me. That you give to me, your love is better than life. I know it well, and I find all that I need in you. Jesus, you're 
brighter than light. I know it well, and I find all that I need in you. Thank you, Jesus. that I have heard, amen, in my lifetime, amen, and I, we don't sing it nearly enough, but it's an older song, but it says, I sing praises to your name, hallelujah, the praises go up, and the blessings come down, hallelujah, and I sing praises to your name. my sermon I'd love for uh, brother David wasn't expecting this but maybe he can do a song right at, toward the end amen would that be all right brother David ask a favor <laughs>
bless his heart, he only got three hours of sleep. He and his wife last night, and I, I hope I don't put him to sleep in this little message that I'm about to preach, but amen. Brother David, you are one of a kind. We appreciate you. Do we love Brother David? And he brought a precious friend with him, a sister, uh, what is your name, sister? Sister Nancy. Amen. What a blessing you are. I was telling my wife, what a beautiful spirit that you have. Thank you. Amen. But I, I have a message upon my heart that I feel like the Lord has spoken to my heart. And if it's all right, can I get comfortable to take this coat off? Can I do that? Hallelujah. Amen. But if you have your Bible, so good my good friend, Robbie Yates. Is this Mike okay? Yes. Okay. Amen. So good to see Robbie and his wife. Amen. Amen. To meet brother and, brother and sister Dixon. Amen. To be with your great pastor, Brother Carter. Pastor Carter. Amen. Don't we love and appreciate him? I've shared the testimony with many friends about the compassion that your pastor has for you folks, for his congregation. Amen. I can guarantee you that if, if you needed a shirt, he'd buy you. Praise God. I'm not, not that you, you, know, you need one. But <laughs> don't go asking him. Amen. But he's just that kind of person. He's compassionate. Amen. He loves his people, loves his congregation. Amen. And I'm glad to share it with those kind of people. Amen. Amen. But if you have your Bibles, there we go. We got the mic situated now. Well, I, I hope. Amen. But Luke, the 15th chapter, beginning with verse 11, it's a very familiar passage to all of us. Luke, the 15th chapter, verse 11. And what I want to talk about, it's a unique subject here tonight. It's very simple. But I'm going to be talking to you about the importance of looking in your own backyard. The importance of looking in your own backyard. Luke, the 15th chapter, verse 11, it says, And there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me the share of my estate, of your estate. And so he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all that he had and set off for a distant country and there squandered his wealth on wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out citizen of that country who sent him to the fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but none of them would give him anything. Verse 17 says, and when he had come to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare and I am starving to death? I will set out and go to my father and say to my father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of your hired servants. So he went up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, praise God, that gives us all hope, don't it? That the Father sees us even when we're afar away off. His Father saw him, was filled with compassion for him, ran to his son, threw his arms around him, kissed him, and the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and I'm no longer worthy to be called thy son. Amen. And let's go ahead and pray. Father, in your precious name, we ask that you will bless and anoint your word. And anoint the lips of clay today that I would speak the words that you would have me to speak. And we ask it all in that exclusive name. The name of Jesus. The name that is above every name. 
And everybody said amen. amen. And you may be seated. Talking about the importance of looking in your own backyard. And when we get to looking in other people's backyard, we get in trouble. Come on now. Hallelujah. What was it that got David in trouble? He started looking in somebody else's backyard. Hallelujah. Folks get in trouble when they start church hopping. Come on now. Somebody help me preach. Amen. Looking in the other backyard when God's given you a good backyard. Come on now. Somebody help me preach. Hallelujah. It's important that we not allow ourselves to be deceived in these days and hours that we live in. There's so many false doctrines. There's so many things that can deceive us. Hallelujah. My father told me many years ago, he said, or at least I remember somebody, and I believe my dad repeated it uh, later on in life, but, but uh, uh, I heard somebody say it's better to aim high Amen. And maybe hit just a little bit above the target than to go a little bit low. Come on now. Somebody help me preach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some folks look at, at Pentecostals and say, man, you guys, are, you're, just, you're just too strict. Amen. But I've been around long enough to know that there are some people that's thrown everything away. Everything out the window. Hallelujah. I'm glad there's still some folks that still believe in something. If you don't stand for something, then you're going to fall for anything. Hallelujah. Back to thought, talking about the importance of looking in our own backyard. 135 years ago, a man by the name of Russell Conwell wrote a book entitled Acres of Diamonds. The book generated $7 million in sale sales and out of the money he funded the University of Philadelphia. It was one man's story that helped build a beautiful university that still stands today. And in this amazing story he talked about a South African farmer and about how that he worked for many years. He sacrificed. He lived on almost nothing. He had an ox. He had a plow. He had a small barn, a small house that he lived in with his family. Then one day, there came a traveler. Now, there's another message that I could preach here. I'll say for another time. Beware of the traveler. In those days, 135 years ago, they... they everybody were farmers and they had barns and if a traveler was traveling through they would say all right I'll give you a bell of hay to sleep on I'll give you a blanket amen we might be able to find you a warm fire if you promise not to burn down the barn and so they'd give them a place to stay and so one day a traveler came through and so the traveler instead of them trying to influence the traveler then the traveler influenced them you got to be careful who your kids hang out with come on now hallelujah Hallelujah. you got to be careful who you rub shoulders with and so this stranger told the farmer he said there is a phenomenal thing taking place in India and perhaps even in Spain. And he said, what they're doing is is they're discovering diamonds. Now, in his mind, he didn't understand. This farmer didn't understand anything about diamonds. He didn't understand anything about process. And so in his mind, he thought about just beautiful sparkling diamonds just laying all over the ground. And so no doubt the traveler probably didn't understand anything about process. And so the farmer, man, it sparked his interest. Diamonds, they're finding diamonds. And they found supposedly in a matter of days or weeks that these people that were going to India overnight, they were becoming wealthy in just a matter of days. 
the ambitious farmer, he decides. He gets this wild hair. Amen. Thank God for, for good, godly women that give us some advice every once in a while. Sometimes it would be best to take their advice. Can you say amen? I remember years ago when they were raising emus everywhere. Y'all remember that? Man, and people were getting rich off emus. They were raising emus and selling emu eggs for like $10,000. I got this wild hair. I told my wife, I said, honey, I said, give me an emu. Let's, see. Let's get us a farm somewhere. Let's, let's raise one in our backyard. <laughs> they even bought me an emu incubator. You remember that, Sherry? I was going to get rich. And about the time that I was wanting to buy an emu, the market collapsed and you couldn't give emus away. People were turning their emus loose by the thousands and they were roaming the fields because they couldn't afford to feed them. Y'all remember that? And so this farmer, he says, he says to his wife, he says, honey, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Amen. We've got to do this. And so he sells the farm. He sells everything. Amen. He takes his wife over to her mama's, drops her off with the kids, and says, I'll be back. But when I come back, I'm going to come back a wealthy man. Amen. I'll, I'll be able to buy all the farms in wherever it was that his farm was located. And so... The sad part about it is that this guy, he sold his farm, and so he goes to India in search of diamonds, and after he gets there, he finds out that it was just a fantasy that somebody had dreamed up. Maybe an isolated case where someone found some diamonds, but then somebody told him, said, well, you know, uh, they're discovering diamonds in Spain. He couldn't email his wife. His wife didn't know what was going on. She found out later on. He goes to Spain in search for diamonds. Discovers that it's nothing more than just a lie, deception. He was deceived. He sold everything that he had in search of diamonds that did not even exist. It was just simply a fantasy. But the sad part about this story is that the man that bought the farm, he had the same plow, he bought the same ox, he worked the same field, and one day as he's plowing the field, he plows up a black rock. Now this is not a made up story, this is, this is a true story, it's not evangelistically speaking. And so... And so he holds it up to the sun, and at a certain, uh, when the light is hitting it just at the right moment, he could see the colors of a rainbow. And so he takes this black rock, and he walks into his living room where the fireplace mantle was, set it upon the fireplace mantle. Months went by. Weeks went by. Amen. And he and his wife just looked at an old chunk of coal and didn't really think anything significant about it. But one day, the preacher came over. Amen. 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 He was Catholic, so he was a priest. <laughs> Amen. But he was a respectable man. It just so happened that he got up. I don't know if he went into the kitchen, but he happened to pass by the fireplace mantle. And the priest looks at that old chunk of coal and his eyes caught the reflection of the sun right at the right moment as it hit the rock. And he said, whoa. He said, and he called his name. He said, he said, where did you get that? And, uh, he said, he said, well, he said I, I found it. He said, it's out in the field. It's out in my backyard. He said, you got to be kidding. He said, he said, before I became a priest, 
He said, I used to be a jeweler. And he said, I could swear if I was a swearing man <laughs> that that's a diamond. And he said, can you lead me to where you found that diamond or where that you found that chunk of coal? Amen. The thing that he thought was coal. Amen. Let me preach about that a little bit. Hallelujah. Sometimes we got to go through process before we can be discovered. Hallelujah, some of us, we have not discovered exactly who we are in Christ, but once we get a revelation of who we are in Christ, then you begin to sparkle and you begin to shine and God begins to advance your life. Hallelujah, you may feel like a chunk of coal. Hallelujah, but one of these days the Holy Ghost anointing is going to come upon you and you're going to shake the foundations of hell. Hallelujah, you're going to do exploits for God. Yeah. 